First person shooters have always been a staple genre to gaming, but 2017 was a little bit different. Unlike 2016, where you had a slew of marquee multiplayer first person shooters, games like Titanfall 2, Battlefield 1, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Overwatch. 2017 was different in the sense that the majority of quality first person shooters actually came from a single player standpoint. That may turn some gamers off, but nonetheless, there were a lot of great first person shooters this year, and we're gonna go over them in this video where we take a look at the the top 10 first person shooters of 2017. A lot of different and unique experiences on this list, so let's get right into this. Number 10, Get Even. Get Even is a first person shooter survival horror game developed by Farm51 and published by Bandai Namco. Farm51 actually created some other lower key FPS titles as well, such as Necrovision and Painkiller Hell and Damnation. Get Even is a pretty unique survival horror game where you play as Cole Black as he wakes up in an old abandoned asylum. He's confused and his sole memory is the attempted rescue of a teenage girl with a bomb strapped to her chest. It's very much developed as a thriller and it always keeps you engaged. There are some issues with the game, but Get Even was one of those more underrated titles that you should definitely give a look to. Number 9, Quake Champions. So Quake Champions came back in 2017 and the game is still in early access and it's a different type of Quake experience. It's more of a hero based game where you have different characters that utilize different strengths and have different weaknesses. That's a formula that's been popular in a lot of games, especially free to play titles such as League of Legends, Smite, and I can go on and on with that formula. Quake Champions does have a champions pack that gets you instant access to Quake Champions at a reduced price during the early access period and the pack also includes the full roster of current and future champions. The game itself still has a lot of enjoyable Quake elements, and while it still does have its issues and updates have been rolling out slowly, it is still an early access title, so hopefully by the time this game is fully ready, it could be a more complete experience, but so far there's been a lot of promise shown in Quake Champions. It's only available on PC at this moment, but hopefully it hits consoles at some point too. Number 8, Super Hot for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation VR. Super Hot was a game that took the PC gaming world by storm when it was released on that platform, but this year it came to PlayStation 4 as well as PlayStation VR. If you don't know what Super Hot is, it's a time based first person shooter that has a lot of unique mechanics. Now, whenever talking about Super Hot, you do have to preface by saying it's a very, very short game, but it has a lot of replay value with additional playtime available through the challenge and endless game modes to keep the game fresh and interesting. It's a very charming game, sure, it's not up to par with some of the big budget triple A first person shooters, but it's a game well worth your time. And if you have PSVR, that'll add another layer to the super hot experience. Number 7, Farpoint. So Superhot can be played using PlayStation VR, but Farpoint is developed ground up for PSVR. And quality standalone PlayStation VR titles are still few and far between, but Farpoint definitely stands out as one of those. It's not just a VR shooting gallery or a tech demo, this is a competent and well-made game. Now gameplay-wise, it's not revolutionary in any standpoint, but given the fact that VR FPSs are still being worked on, and they really haven't found their footing on how to make them, Farpoint is the best one thus far. And it's got a lot of great design choices. If you have PlayStation VR, Farpoint is one of those games that definitely should be a part of your library, and it's a quality FPS in its own right.
Number 6, Destiny 2. So Destiny was one of the highly anticipated games of this generation. It was developed by Bungie, the guys behind Halo, so naturally it would come with a wave of hype behind it. The first game, many would say the first game failed to live up to expectations, but it did become a progressively better experience through updates and expansions. Destiny 2 is a lot more of the same, to the point where many would consider it to be more of a Destiny 1.5, but understand that by the end of Destiny's lifespan, it did carve out a fan base, so going off the rails and changing a lot of elements wouldn't be that great of an idea, and what you have with Destiny 2 is great gameplay. Unfortunately, there has been some controversy with the first DLC, locking away some content, and that's unfortunate, but what you'll find in Destiny 2 is a very well-made game from a design standpoint, and if you enjoyed the first game, Destiny 2 will be right up your alley. Number 5, Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. Rising Storm 2 is unlike many first person shooters you'll find on consoles. It's a PC exclusive series and it very much focuses on the tactical aspects of FPS gameplay. It emphasizes large scale teamwork with realistic mechanics and combat. This is not a game for the faint of heart. It requires quite a bit of investment and the gamers playing the game are also very skilled. So you really need to take your time and understand the nuances of Rising Storm 2 Vietnam but what it becomes is a very engrossing FPS experience. It's multiplayer pits up to 64 players against one another and it can get a bit chaotic but the teamwork has to sustain through the entire time if you want an fps to really get into and really engross yourself into rising storm vietnam is one of the best that you'll find it is only available on pc and it works best with a keyboard and mouse so that's expected Number 4, Call of Duty World War II. How could we talk about first person shooters without talking about Call of Duty? This year's entry was a little bit different in that it took the series back to World War II. And it is a great Call of Duty game, the multiplayer is very good, the zombies component as always is an excellent component to the game, and we have to give a shout to the single player campaign as well. It's very high in production values and storytelling, and from a visual side of things, the single player looks absolutely outstanding, and it has a lot of great set pieces, and that's what you'd come to expect from a single player Call of Duty experience. At this point, if Call of Duty hasn't won you over, World War II, even though it is a nice change of pace with the different time period, it's not going to do much revolutionary to win you back over. But for those of you that have been in and out with the Call of Duty franchise, World War II does offer a lot to get invested into. In some ways, compared to the, you know, the, the sleek, futuristic kind of yeah. weaponry we see nowadays. So, I'm kind of curious, like these weapons have a lot of character in their own way. And, and, and how do you maybe adjust like how you design the game or how you design the multiplayer experience around that? Around the different weapons, well, I yeah. mean, it's you know you you jump in there, might, but. Uh... You know, with all the iconic weapons that we have. Number three, Prey. Prey is a reboot of that 2006 sci-fi first-person shooter, also titled Prey. That game was supposed to see a sequel, but that never came to fruition. But instead, Bethesda did pick up the game and assigned a reboot of Prey to Arcane Studios, the guys that also put out Dishonored. And Prey is an excellent single-player sci-fi first-person shooter with an amazing atmosphere. That's what I would say really shines about Prey is a game that really absorbs you into the world and scenery. Gameplay-wise, it's strong visual it's great and it runs great on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and if you have a nice PC it looks great on there too. Content wise it's pretty loaded as well being a single player only experience you're getting a solid 20 hours of gameplay and there are side quests and additional things to uncover and it's presented in a Metroidvania style and that adds a lot to the gameplay of Prey. Prey was one of those games that released earlier on in this year and a lot of you guys probably have forgotten about it you probably didn't check it out but it is a quality filled first person shooter. Morning. This is a stationwide emergency. Five, four, three, two, one. We can fight the invasion. If I can't save us. 
Number two, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Resident Evil came back this year, back in January, with Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, which was a far cry from the types of experiences we were getting in Resident Evil 6 and Resident Evil 5. Those games being more action-oriented, Resident Evil 7 brings back that emphasis of horror, and it does that very well. Just like Prey, this is a very atmospheric experience, and while it's not an incredibly long experience, you can spend a solid 10 to 12 hours with the game, and it's quality for those 10 to 12 hours. Also, I should mention that if you do have PlayStation VR, it does have PSVR support. A little bit wonky on that side, but it's still an interesting way to experience the game, so that is an option as well. And by the way, there has been some DLC release for the game as well, so if you want to add more content to the RE7 experience, you have that as well. And if you've yet to pick up the game, there is a Resident Evil 7 Gold Edition that includes the base game as well as all of the DLC content, so make sure to check that out. And finally, number one, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus is the sequel to the excellent Wolfenstein The New Order, and I should preface before talking about Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus that I would highly recommend you to play Wolfenstein The New Order first. There is an intro video that recaps the events of The New Order, but you should really play the game for yourself, and ideally you'd want to play that game, as well as the standalone game, Wolfenstein The Old Blood, but at the very least, I would highly recommend to play The New Order, and that's a great game too, so that should not be seen as a chore. However, for Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus is definitely the better game. This is what a sequel should be. The gameplay is as gruesome as ever and as fun as ever, and the story and creativity of the game reaches new heights from the last game. Now, the story itself does get a little bit zany towards the end, but Wolfenstein is kind of built on that, and to me, that added a little bit more fun to the overall experience. Once again, this was a very good single-player first-person shooter, and that's what we saw this year, with the top three games all being single-player first-person shooters, but Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus was the very best best. From its excellent visuals, great gameplay, great storytelling, there is a lot to like about Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, and the best part of it all is that this is a game that just released two months ago, and there's been sales for it all over. During Black Friday, it was readily available for $25, and now you can still find it for $30 to $35, and at that price point, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus is an absolute steal. So that wraps up the top 10 first person shooters of 2017. What do you think? What were your favorite first person shooters of the year? As I mentioned, not a lot of standout multiplayer experiences, but we did have a few great ones. Really from an FPS standpoint, this year shined through with the single player first person shooters, and hopefully that trend continues. I'd love to see more great multiplayer experiences, but I think single player first person shooters can also be great, and we saw that this year, and we're gonna get another one next year in the new Metro game. So a lot to look forward to. Let us know your thoughts on the best first person shooters of the year thank you for watching and goodbye